Hey y'all, so today we are talking about Pixies Plugin 3.0. It just released about eight days ago on the 3rd of September, and I wanted to show y'all kind of what's new, what's different. Uh, one of the first things that you're probably going to notice is that I already have Pixies in this scene, and there are two main visual differences that you'll see, and then I'll go into how to get Pixies into your project after that. The first difference is that there is no Pixies menu up top. That is gone. You don't need to worry about a menu system up top or any dialog boxes that pop up. It is all controlled from within this contextual menu down here at the bottom. So you have individual things that you can do, such as create UVs and decimate and the basic import CAD option. However, none of it's going to be up top. What that also comes with is the fact that the entitlement system has changed for the better by a long shot. So previously, the way that you had to use Pixies plugin is that you would manage your Pixies plugin license in pixies-software.com, allocate it, sign it out. Or if you were using an offline server um, that you had to maintain like a Flex LM server, then you had to go through all of the server setup, pointing to the right server, etc. All of that is gone. It is now attributed to your Unity industry license and you get that entitlement through your Unity license, which is perfect. So if I come into the package manager in Unity 6, uh, and as a, a brief aside, what we're looking at here is Unity 6 within the HDRP sample scene. You can go into the Unity registry, type in Pixies, and assuming that you have the entitlement, meaning that you are a Unity industry customer or user, you will be able to get in and leverage this. So I went ahead and installed it. You'll see an install button. Just click on that. It will pull straight through. There's no need to do any separate login or anything like that. And next, we are going to go ahead and start using this menu by leveraging this import CAD button to kick us off. As a quick 15 second regroup for those of you that are just jumping in now, not sure what Pixie's plugin is, Pixies plugin is a plugin built into Unity Editor that allows you to ingest point cloud, CAD, BIM, and all other types of non-tessellated geometry and get it into your engine in a tessellated, optimized way. Um, you can also apply some rules that we'll look at in a minute here through the rule engine, as well as uh, do some automated LOD system setup as well. So let's dive in. All right, so let's go ahead and hit import CAD. I'm gonna hit that button now. And let's use our handy dandy assembly file for this engine. I'll go ahead and open it. And you'll notice a couple things right off the bat. The first one is that after importing this asset, I still don't see it in the scene. So we are looking for a 3D component and it's not here. That's because there's a fundamental difference in the way that the import and the re-import of these assets is happening within plugin 3.0. And that is when I first do an import of a CAD asset, it creates the scriptable object for me that already has a lot of what used to be populated in the dialog box that would pop up after hitting import CAD in the dialog menu up top in the last iteration of plugin. The nice thing is here, this lives as a constant object. So I can now choose if I want to pull in metadata, variance, PMI. Uh, for example, one of the really cool things in 3.0 is that you can pull PMI data through uh, including camera set views from things like Katia, uh, as well as annotations. So all of that now pulls through into Unity and you can actually jump around the camera set views. Um, I Because of the object I'm going to be pulling in, uh, I don't really care about that for right now. I will pull in the metadata and let's leave all of that how it is. The nice thing is once I've imported it, you'll see I have a re-import button that will uh, this will change to. And essentially that means I can make changes later and do a re-import and it will still apply everything that I've uh, created in the meantime. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. And we can see in the bottom right, right behind my video that it is loading in. We now have the prefab here and I can pull the prefab up into the scene. So now I can pull this over this way 
and let's say, oh wow, yeah, that's too small. I want to come back in here and change the scale. I can do a re-import. And now once I've done that, it's going to process. I'm going to see this box come up and now the asset is larger. So that's the idea. That's generally how that's going to work. So super cool. I like having the engine this size. I'll leave that where it's at. Let's say I wanted to have a few rules in here. And I come down here and everything looks pretty good. I'm happy with the fidelity of how it all came through. Um, but just to do a couple of baseline optimizations, let's say I want to come back in here, go into the rule engine. It's going to get my assembly. I can add an action and say filter. Let's filter on name. For any of you that watched my previous videos, um, I'm going to redo these, uh, the rules that I did just the first three or four in the, um, in the video for the old Pixies plugin just to show how that changes here. So I'm going to filter by name, find NOS, which is the nose cone, because this is a German made asset. So this is called NOS1. And in my engine, I find NOS, I'm going to set metadata, and I wanna set name and value, I'll just call it one and one. Then I'm going to add a second rule, and I'm going to filter by containing prop. And I'm going to set metadata for that to one, one. And then I can add in a rule and say, get that and filter by metadata, anything equal to one, one. And after doing that selection, I want to, let's do a uh, hierarchy merge and I'll merge all of that. And then let's say I want to set the material to something new. So let's say I have a material in here that just to be super bright, we're gonna make it bright green. I can come back into my rule engine here and can drag in that new material. So now what's going to happen is when I hit re-import, it's going to re-import at the proper scale. It's then going to filter my hierarchy by nose, by prop, it will take the metadata that's been assigned, merge all of that and set the nose cone and prop to a new material. One thing that maybe I wanna do before all of this is add in a, another rule. So let's say I wanna move this rule all the way up. So I'm gonna move this up. And then I have that as my very first starting option. And just to optimize this up a little bit in the hierarchy, I'm going to merge by final level, which is just gonna take all of the sub children objects out of this thing because it's just too clunky. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and hit re-import. And now it's going to execute all of those rules on the properly sized engine. And then I should be able to see what we have so I'm going to grab the newly populated rule, pull this up, and we'll see that the engine has now come through with that material populated on the nose and the propeller. And they're now combined into one object, right now called NOS. If I wanted to, I could rename it to something different, but that's the idea of how this all works. So we could move this all the way through the pipeline, just how we did in previous Pixies plugin videos. Um, in doing this, you can imagine how I would replicate that process, but that's the idea is that you still have all of your rules. You can still rename all of them. The UI is quite a bit nicer. You can also get in and start to create LODs. Um, so that's a fantastic setup. Really love all the new updates. I really like the contextual menu. I also like having a statistics pane down here so you can immediately see how many triangles you're working with. So the idea, is that Pixie's plugin is now entitled through your industry license. You don't have to log in separately. You can pull in your CAD assets or your point cloud assets. You'll notice if I come down to this arrow, I can change this over to point cloud. Once it's pulled in, you can then create rule sets that will then fix all of these objects. And maybe one thing that I'll fix here just because that's going to drive me crazy is I notice a hole in the back of this propeller. 
So I'm going to come over here, go into the rule engine, and I'm going to add action, and I want to fill holes, or rather remove holes. So I'm going to hit remove holes, leave it all checked through with the negative one, and now what's going to happen is I will collapse this hierarchy, I will re-import with this rule set, and I'll leave this old engine up in here. But I'll pull up the new one, and let's take a look at the difference. So now every time I pull through this engine, the hole is corrected. So every time I get in here, I'll be able to see that the hole is corrected. We'll wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.